Well, with so many mass shootings in this country, uh, more than 300 this year alone, it's easy to feel just helpless. Uh, my next guest says there are steps we can take. Dr. James Densley is a criminal justice professor and co-founder of a mass shooting database known as the Violence Project. Dr. Densley, uh, good morning to you. You know, there are a lot of people who just want us to learn from these incidents so that we can prevent another tragedy. But since May 14th, less than 60 days ago, we had a mass shooting at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, at an elementary school in Texas. Now this 4th of July parade here in Illinois. Uh, the suspected gunman, two teenagers, one a 21 year old. Besides the age of these suspects, besides the fact that typically we're seeing young men what else is a common theme among those involved in such crimes? Yeah, good morning. Um, well, your previous uh, uh, host and presenter mentioned this, that uh, suicidality is actually a common thread that we see here. A mass shooting is really intended to be somebody's final act. And often it's correlated with uh, suicidal ideation. So we see that people really intend to die in the act or they have been thinking about suicide in the build-up toward the act. I think that's really important because if we think about what suicide prevention measures we would put in place to prevent someone from harming themselves, we all could also could see that that would prevent them from harming others too. So that's definitely a through line we see. And then one other piece is this, uh, what threat assessment people would call leakage that you're posting things online or you're talking about this with your friends in advance. A communication of intent to do harm, that right there is a major red flag and also an opportunity for intervention. So this is very common, uh, particularly among these young mass shooters that we've seen uh, of late. You make two really important points that are not reported enough, and that is the suicide factor uh, that so many people tend to try to sweep under the rug, uh, because while these people are very dangerous, they do intend to harm themselves, and we have not done enough to address suicide. Uh, that's what a lot of people think in this nation. And the other uh, point that you're bringing up is the fact that they do communicate, but how can we tell people who would engage with this young person, perhaps a classmate or a friend, that they need to report these dangerous behaviors or dangerous photos, things that, that these uh, killers are obsessed with more frequently and sooner than we're seeing happen. Yeah, a common through line with the work that we've done looking at mass shootings is that there seems to be a sort of unhealthy obsession with past mass shootings. And it's not only a case of uh, copycatting that type of behavior, it's literally that these individuals see themselves in the lives of the past mass shooters. So if you see somebody, a loved one, who just seems to be you know, unnaturally uh, obsessed with past mass shootings, that they're drawing about them, talking about them, um, that they, uh, they have those sort of uh, signs there, that is really an opportunity for intervention and to open up that conversation. One of the biggest barriers is that people don't really recognize that this might be possible in someone that they love. So if it's a friend, if it's a family member, they convince themselves that mass shooters are somebody else. And really the reality is that mass shooters are always somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's classmate. And so it, it's this sort of mental barrier to prevent us from moving forward. We have to kind of get over that, be willing to speak out, not to get somebody in trouble, but to get somebody help. Yeah. And that's really the, the, the change here. One more question. I know my producers are saying we're out of time, but I have to ask you what your thoughts are quickly as to raising the age for purchasing weapons, because that's been a huge part of this discussion. Yeah, uh, I think the evidence is very clear here. We know about uh, adolescent development. We know about what goes on in the lives of teenagers. We know about brain development. And I think it would make a lot of sense to raise that limit. And this is always via states, by the way, because there are differences between access to handguns versus long guns. Some states have this at, at 18, some at 21. But I think overall, the evidence is pointing in the direction of we need to create more of a gap for people to get access to firearms. And that would mean raising that age limit. I would love for people to learn more about your work. Uh, Dr. James Dinsley, a criminal justice professor and co-founder of the Violence Project. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.